Hey everyone, it's Jennifer. I had a previous video that I had uploaded for you guys that showed you how to make realistic hair out of acrylic yarn. And I had some people asking how to actually get the hair onto the um, doll head in the first place. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all how I got that hair onto the doll's head. And then I will show you the stitch that you are supposed to use in order to do this. So as you can see, there are rows of loops. These, this is the loop stitch right here. And you sew these little hair wefts onto the doll's head. And you can put the placement of these hair wefts wherever you need to in order to make this specific hairstyle that you want. Um, I'm currently making a Loki doll and so he's got he's got pretty long hair <clears throat> in um, several of his movies and I have to make a hairline. I'm gonna make the hairline over here and add some more here. So I'm not done yet with his hair obviously. This one right here is going to be in the back because it's a longer piece. And I'm gonna sew it to the back of his head like that. And when I'm done, I can, because I've made these loops long enough, I can cut them if I need to, to make the style correct. So basically that's what these are, is loop stitches on a single chain of your choice of length and you can make these loops as long or as short as you want. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to make the loop stitch. And then after I'm done making one, I will show you how to sew it to the head of the doll. I'm gonna be using this green yarn because uh, black is really hard to film on camera. So, and you can't really see anything. Um, with the stitches because it's just too dark. So I'll be using this as the example. I'm not gonna be using it for his hair. Okay. All right, so the loop stitch is basically just a stitch that you incorporate into your work. Um, so you have to build the foundation first, which is just a regular chain. So like I said earlier, you can make them as short or as long as you want to. So I'm just going to make it a short one for demonstration here. So I'm going to chain, I'm going to chain eight. All right, so I have my eight. Now this stitch is a little bit tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's super easy and you can make a whole bunch of these loop stitches really fast after you get the hang of it. So you hold your working yarn like you always would and with your hook in your whatever hand you use, you're going to go into the top of your chain here, just like you would any other and stitch. instead of grabbing just one and going through like that, like you would for a single crochet, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab both the front yarn and the back of the working yarn. So you're gonna be grabbing two loops instead of just one. So to do that, you just grab that one in the back first, it's easier to do that way. And then catch that first one on your way back through. And so if you see, you can look closely, there's actually three loops right now on your hook instead of the normal two. So you've got one, two, three. Now, this is where your loop size comes into play. So you can make it very short loop by pulling on your working yarn. And now you only have a very small loop. Or you take your working yarn and you, or 
not your working yarn, but it is kind of your working yarn from the back. You take this top loop that you have and you pull as long as you want your loop to be. So this would be long hair. Um, you know, you can make it super long too if you're making a Rapunzel doll or a, just a doll with long hair. So that is how you make, that's how you determine the size of your so loop. This as it is, this loop is not secured yet. It, we have to finish our stitch because we can't do anything until we're done with the actual finishing of the stitch. So you've got your loop down here. Let me show you again so that we can do it in step. All right, through that top bar, snag both of them through, adjust my length. That's about as much as I want. And now drop that loop down to the back and just kind of hang on to it with your finger back here. Just hang on to it. And you're gonna finish your stitch with a yarn over and pull through all three, just like that. So now you have a loop that's hanging down. It's secure, it's not going anywhere. You can't adjust this any longer. So if you made a mistake with the length, you're gonna have to pull back out, pull your stitches back out until you um, get to where you need to make an adjustment. So let's do this again. I'm gonna do a couple more without saying anything so that you can just watch the method. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more of these without talking so that you can just watch the steps of how it's done. All right, so I've got a couple of them done here, and I wanted to show you another step that you can, um, to determine the length of your loops throughout your row here. What I like to do is I will kind of make my row straight and pull the loop, and then I will keep my finger in that loop and try it out on a couple of the other ones that are already, um, that have already been done and make sure that my length is correct so that they're all pretty much the same length. Um, that saves you some yarn in the end because you don't want to be having long and short pieces that don't actually line up with each other because then you're wasting yarn when you cut off a whole bunch of it. And so now I'm at my last one here, and I'll show you what you do when you get to the end, is same thing for your last stitch. Pull your loop down, and then secure it by pulling all through all three loops, okay? Like that. Now you're gonna wanna leave yourself a good amount of a tail when you pull this through. Um, so that you can 
use this to sew it to the head. So let me show you the actual construction of this stitch now. This was your foundation row, your chain, where you started. You had your eight chains or whatever it is that you're using the amount. And by doing this loop stitch into that foundation chain, you've actually ended up with a row of single crochets on top here. And that's because of the construction of your stitch. And what this does is it makes it easy for you to know which holes to go into to secure it to the head. Now you can, the placement is up to you. You can do placement on the skull or the doll head with the right side up or you can do the wrong side up. It's you. up to you. Just so long as you're going into your top part of your single crochet here, you're using these, you're utilizing that as an anchor. All right, so I'm gonna actually sew, because it's still hard to see black, even though I'm just sewing it on here, I'm gonna go ahead and use this green piece and then I'll just pull it back out when I'm done. All right, so just make sure that you have a good needle that works. I use a tapestry needle that has um, a little curve at the tip makes it easier to get into your stitches that way. All right, so I've threaded that long tail at the end through this hook or this needle. And I'm gonna line it up. Let me zoom in just a little bit for you. I'm going to line it up with an actual row that is on the doll's head, because I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my cat. She's okay, don't worry, she's fine. All right, so yes, we will line these up on the rows that are already created in our doll's head. Figure out where you want the placement to be. You can, as you can see, you can, you're able to skip, I was able to skip a couple of rows here in between because having the hair down like that and then brushing it out will give you um, a lot more volume and you won't see gaps in the doll's um, hair. All right, so I got my tail. And basically what I'm gonna do is just use these free spaces in between. So you've got, let me twist it this way. This is your row of single crochet. And when you're gonna put the hair on, you're gonna twist the body to the side and you're gonna use the bars. These are the bars that you are left with when you're doing your single crochets. So take your needle, go through the first bar and up. Now you want to anchor that piece by going through. And then I just do a in and out sort of stitch. I don't even know if that's, if there's a name for that, probably. So I go into the hair on the row, on my loop row. And then I find my next bar, which is right here. Oh, that was out of, out of camera. <laughs> Sorry. It's been a while since I've done videos for you all. And then I pull through and I go into the next single crochet from the bottom like that. So you're basically just doing this through the whole um, piece, uh, whole length of hair that you've got. 
you're going into the bar of the single crochet on the head, pulling that through and then going back up through your hair weft in the single crochets there. And to me, this is um, just a more, um, I think, it, I feel like it's a cleaner way to get the hair on um, than any other method. I like the way that it is super secure and doesn't tend to um, pull out like other methods do. Because sometimes you'll get, um, you know, a little piece of hair that just somehow wiggles free out of that loop um, method where you're just doing a hook through and grabbing and then pulling that through kind of thing. Um, any method that works for you is fine, but this one is my preferred method of doing hair. And so this one, I'm gonna just kind of find a space down in here where I started this chain and I just wanna make sure I get that last one a little bit more secure because it's kind of bumpy at the end there where you started it. All right, so let me zoom out a little bit here. That right there is how you get the hair from your loop stitch onto the head. Now you can see right now how I was talking about the placement of the wrong side or the right side. This is more flat. It's flat to the head. But if you put this in the front, you could now lift this yarn and fold it back and brush it. And this could be a way to hide your stitches from that row. And it gives it more volume. So figure out which way you like it placed. It doesn't really matter um, if you're doing a whole head and you just wanna make it all straight, that's fine. But this is just a really good way to create an actual hairstyle. So then you would, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pair of scissors and you're going to clip these loops. You're just gonna want to clip through the loop like that. Super simple. Make sure you're pulling the loop all the way to the end and you're just clipping through that bottom part there, not somewhere in the middle. And then you take the pet brush and you brush it all out. You can, if you would like, separate the strands of, or the ply, because, you know, the, there's different amounts of strands in each weight of yarn. And this one has four strands. And you can separate these if you would like to. It's not necessary but it sometimes makes the brushing out process a little bit easier. It creates less knots if you have them, you know, kind of separated as much as you can possibly get these strands separated. Brush it out, that's when you can actually use the flat iron that I showed before in the other video and you can cut, style, however you want to do the hair. But this is how you make the long hair and how you put it on the head. I hope that makes sense for you guys and let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks.